it must mean that they do have some sort of a plan. What do they want to bring out against it? You know, is it going to be an aggressive look? Is it just going to be like a Lucianami or something along those lines? Would be interesting. Uh, Annie has been very popular. Ari has been very popular as well, but that's of course banned out. So, you know, Annie would not be a shocker whatsoever. And now I'm just kind of curious, are they going to try to grab Lucian? Um, because Lucian Melio is really, really strong. You yeah. may want to be having that denial pick. Uh, there are options, you know, to pair alongside it. Still, Lucian Nami is pretty much the only thing uh, we see besides the Lucian Melio, which is kind of like the new age version of it. Mm -hmm. The other big thing for Immortals too is, even if they don't have access to the Lucian, Tactical has been comfortable running the Athelios, which they're going to lock in right mm -hmm. now. Canvi returning back to that Sejuani. Had the Kha'Zix game yesterday. Unfortunately, even though they had a nice comeback after that 10k deficit, it's really hard to pilot Kha'Zix into what was triple melee, but the Sejuani being open allows Kenvi to play this game. We know that this is a guy that coming up through the challenger scene, he's known for the carries, but his first game of the split against Thanatos, he had so much control of the entire map. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was looking really, really good on the Sejuani in that game. Uh, was able to, to track, uh, it was Santorin, I believe. Uh, really effectively denied a lot of the ganks that he was looking for and find a lot of plays himself. So uh, Kenvi, you know, through through those first couple games, definitely looking strong. And uh, it is the third straight game of Aphelios for Tactical, so uh, not mixing that up at all. Lucianami coming through as expected as we're moving on into the second phase of bans here. Uh, we do have the ability to just kind of ban out some of the, of the mid laners, some of the solo laners um, on the Immortal side. It looks like it's just more targeting of, of solo thus far, because Bolulu doesn't really feel like a Cassante guy. Yeah. He's been pretty much exclusively mages, it feels like, since he's come into up into the LCS. Uh, and solo, you know, generally always wants to play these tanks these days. He's played Scion, he's played Ornn. Uh, the Scion has already been banned out. They're taking away the Cassante. So it'll be interesting to see if TL just keep throwing bans at him and try to use fifth pick here for Summit to really get an explosive matchup where he can try to take advantage of solo because Summit's laning has always been a strong point. Even when he's had other issues, he has still been dominant in lane. Uh, and through the first couple games, he's been really good in the team fights as well. He's not really been making some of those errors that I think people sometimes criticize him for. Yeah, that's one of the big improvements we're already seeing within the opening week for Team Liquid. I think in spring, despite Summit having a monstrous laning phase game to game to game, he's always been overextended. He gets caught out by the jungler. And then in team fights, teleports have not been great during that spring split. But yesterday, the Jax game, immaculate team fighting, always where it needs to be, and providing and making space for both Yawn and Harry to step up. So Team Liquid already showing a fresh new look alongside the kind of new bad boys uh, <laughs> <laughs> mood and vibe they're going for. Pretty much dunking and trash talking every bad single team. Bad boys and pans over to him with the Poro on his head. <laughs> hey, 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 that Poro head is terrifying, man. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, and it is going to be Gwen banned away, you know, by Immortal. So clearly trying to have some sort of a protection ban against summit you know if you are going to play tanks you do not want to be playing into gwen something that can play really well in the side lanes also join up in those team fights uh strong in 5v5 it's looking like it's just going to be orn you know not a big surprise we already have seen him play it once uh, and just going to be moving back towards it again the big thing that i'm shocked about oh hey do do we oh see a okay lock this would be a decent matchup into Andy. you have the range advantage you can keep them at a distance team liquid the big thing i wanted to flag is that a lot of the junglers were already taken off the pool and because kenvi had already grabbed the sejuani pioshik had to look into the lee sin because they want to drive this early game they want to make sure that the lucian nami much like in spring gets off the board and they need to keep that snowball running yeah absolutely and valkaz for bolu this is one of the champions that people really know him for 74 percent win rate 27 games played in in pro play so has been so good on it you know did bring it out a couple times uh, mostly in losses last split and when he first subbed up in but looked really good on it and was was really making things happen for the team so i'm excited to see him back on one of his signature picks here it is going to be Jax again for summit uh so really you know not a, a dominating matchup in the 1v1 by any means but if you can get pressure if you can get ahead you can draw the orange to the side lane you know pull him away from the 5v5 which is really where yep. he wants to be playing uh, and try to create some havoc you know through that uh, but when it comes to having to 5v5 it's going to be a, i think a lot more difficult to execute on the 5v5s for tl uh, they're going to be having to approach from multiple angles they're going to be having to find those really good uh, engages coming from sides because if it is a front to back team fight immortals are just way more equipped for that you have yeah. an enchanter you have these two really powerful uh, carries with long range and you have two beefy tanks with good forms of engage so you know it is going to be up to tl to either dominate the early game and just run over immortals or to be more creative in how they're approaching these team fights to really make things work. 
Gonna be about the wallet diff for Team Liquid. Gotta hit the ground running in this early game. Otherwise, when you look at that 5v5, you are staring down the barrel of a superior team fighting comp on the side of Immortals. Gonna get ready for, as we hit the rift, another big thing here is Zale. I know it's opening week, but both of these teams are 2-0 and zero in the league right now. I don't know if anyone had that kind of expectation going forward, but one of these teams' win streak is going to be broken while the other continues. Absolutely. I mean, especially for Immortals, I don't think anyone was expecting them to be looking as good as they have, especially right out the gate. Tactical has really been shining alongside Treats, and uh, I think it, it really spells good things for this squad. You know, if their bot lane can continue to play at a really high level, can continue to be that carry threat, all of a sudden, Immortals looked way more solid, right? Because we know what we're going to get from Solo. He is a really strong team fighter. He doesn't usually give up big leads in lane. Um, but Immortals, the criticism for that most people had was, who is consistently going to be the guy that gets you over the finish line, right? No one could really point to anyone because Tactical has so many ups and downs. Bolulu hasn't really shown that he could really take over and, and get you those wins at the LCS level. It's, it's a five-stack brush. TL's about to get clapped. Uh, TL thought that they brought more members to the party, but Immortals were all in onto the death brush, and that is the result of Harry's flash getting burned. Yeah, just going to be able to force out that flash. Thankfully for them, no real hard CC on the Immortal side. Uh, Kenby, I believe, just started W. He didn't want to start Q, so they weren't going to, like, full commit. They didn't have enough CC to really lock down anyone. Uh, but it is the Flash being forced. It is a potion down for Harry right at level 1. So nice job uh, denying that little excursion that TL were going on to try to get some vision. Yeah, TL dropped the ward on the bottom river bush here. So Kenvy, if he wants to punish Harry's lack of Flash in the first five minutes of the game, he's going to path towards the top side of the map, look for the wraparound, and play off of the Lulu CC. Yep, but they have that warded as well. You can see that uh, some probably moved down and it's a blue over by the blue wall uh, there is another ward from tl so going to be tracked across the map here uh is going for a bit of an interesting pass so raptors straight over to blue uh so maybe just going try to three camp top like immediately or or perhaps was worried about some sort of an invade uh, because Teal was checking on bot side. Maybe he was concerned that Pioshik would be invading and starting up on that top side. So we'll see exactly where Kenby wants to go from here. Uh, but Yon playing Knight, kind of pretty expected on that Lucian. You know, we'll be looking to try to get these quick trades against Tactical and Streets, poke them down, and really create an advantage through that. You know, Lucian Nami in lane is, is less about the 100 0 all ins, more about the poking and prodding, utilizing this disdain from the Nami yeah. uh, to really try to win out over time. And generally, you know, when you have these Enchanter versus Enchanter matchups, healing Enchanters do usually win out against the shielding Enchanters. You know, you can kind of out sustain as long as you're just constantly poking and prodding and trading there. Piyosha going to look for the Sonic Wave, but Balulu's way too far in the tower yeah. to, for him to connect. I know that the idea for Pioshik is if he can somehow burn a flash off of blue, then it livens that or, or relieves the pressure from Aerie in the middle game. But Kenvi is going to walk on over, and Pioshik going for a oh, sneaky wraparound here. This is really sneaky, the, the wraparound you know, coming around here. Uh, and they're going to know that he's not on a red buff now, but Harry has no flash. Yeah, can be oh, flashing forward. Oh, but the Arctic Assault didn't connect. Yeah, they get the permafrost down. Does he have enough damage? The first strike, it's not enough damage amp to take out Harry. And Pioshek just might sneak away with this red buff before Kenby gets back. Yep, he's going to be able to get it. That sucks for Kenby. And now Kenby going to be face checking him here. He has no flash. Pioshek could go for this. Core JJ is moving uh, and Kenby senses something is amiss. But yeah, Kenby looking for the Q flash there does not actually connect. Uh, pretty unfortunate for him, as it means that Harry gets away, he loses his red buff, and he loses the summoner. You know, Bolulu just not quite having enough damage to actually knock down Harry. Yeah, so kind of to restate what TL's goals are, you know, Pioshik either needs to allow these lanes to continue flourishing, or he needs to snowball them ahead. Kenvi has to correct these lane states as the bot lane erupts. Burns the summoner spell off the tactical, and Summit is able to just leave Strike away. No real danger there. Yep, not too concerned. Just hold on to that ward. Sometimes it's just better to just hold on to your trigger ward when you're playing Jax oh, instead no. of actually, you know, just using that in the river. Uh, because you have that leap strike, just get away. Pioshik, though, looking for the wraparound. They're going to go for this dive here. They are quite healthy. Uh, there are no combat summons besides the flash. There's no tanky member on the side of Team Liquid, so they have to play this one out beautifully. Core tanks out the last turret shot, and they drop the turret aggro over to Pioshik. Doesn't go down. Balulu is here for the engaged ghosting over and picks up the fish for dinner. Nicely done, Balulu on the roam, going to be able to get one back. You can see Treats was trying, it felt like, to flash in between Pioshik and Tactical, trying to absorb that Sonic Wave, trying to block as much damage as he possibly could, make it difficult to even click on him. Uh, but 
the dive here played really well. Piotr has been very active. It's that same ward he Ws over to that he had actually used earlier to invade on that red buff. Yeah. And then he queues over the wall, so he just goes around all the vision there. His pathing has been really smart. Uh, they start off with the heal here. Core JJ pulling aggro with that W, and he's just sitting on the very edge of that range. Takes a second shot. It was a nice route from Tactical to actually force the flash out there from Core JJ. But then Bolulu, who had been ghosting down, does flash in, gets a kill back. Still good for TL though overall, as it's Yawn who picks up the kill and Tactical dies. Plus, is going to miss out on the experience as well as that gold. And Bolulu lost minions on the roam, yeah. so you know there is the cost to that as well. And as a result, you can see. Uh, TL up that 600 gold. And Tactical is still down summoner spells. Barry is not coming up for another couple of minutes. So Kenvi is now relegated to babysitting bottom side for the next yeah, you know, couple of minutes. And he's spotted. So Yawn and Core can play with absolute safety while Pioshek gets to take his time, level up and experience, continue that snowball for the side of Team Liquid. I mean, Kenvi is forced to do this. He has to make sure that Tactical doesn't far too fall, uh, fall too far behind or Pioshek and the rest of Team Liquid are just going to run away with the game. Yeah, it definitely becomes difficult when you have a losing lane like that. You need, as you're saying, you want to play coverage, but if you spend too much time down there uh, and you end up in a losing 3v3, then that doesn't really do you any good either. So you have to still make sure you're cycling those camps, you know, keeping up an XP, uh, looking for those opportunities, um, because it is Pioshek who's definitely gotten a lot more done, it feels like, in these early levels. Kenvi had his one kind of big moment looking towards mid, where they tried to punish that missing flash from Harry at level 1, wasn't able to capitalize on it, uh, and after that, it's really just been all Pioshek. You know, and as, as soon as can be spotted down on bot side, Summit obviously can go aggressive on top side. He can look to trade more heavily. And you can see he's up 12 CS already. And the wave is equalized. This is post bounce. So there should be just as many minions for Summit to farm up on that top side uh, as there are for Solo. So he's going to end up a good two waves up on Solo just in that 1v1. And again, showcasing why he is so feared in these 1v1s on top side. Dragon is available for both teams of taking, but Team Liquid just continuing that snowball. There's a timer where Balulu is looking for the roam. Doesn't have summoner spells, but Yon still has a flash to work with. It would have to be a great Titanic disruption to knock Yon out of the sky here, but he looks for Core, trying to take advantage of the champion with no flash. Great bubble interrupts the life form disintegration Ray, Can he walk out? He's going to do his best. The nice heal from the surging tides keeps Team Liquid's bottom lane alive. Damn, that bubble from Core was huge. A pre queued the bubble, you know, throws that out before Balu even oh lets the ult rip. And now Yawn might actually kill off Tactical. He's getting very low, and Yawn has flash. He's going to go for flash it. Flash forward, baby. Team Liquid are once again running this bot lane. Oh my god, that is so bad for Immortals. And Solo, he's probably going to get dope because they showed bot. Here he comes. He has kick. He kicks him before he gets a chance to use call. The forge got under the tower. Team Liquid, we knew that this was what they were capable of from Spring Split, and they're carrying it over just as before. Yeah, their early games have just been incredible, but bot lane is completely over at this point. Tactical 38 CS to 66 with Yon having that kill as well. That one hurts so bad. You know, not only are they not able to actually get the kill with Bolu coming down here, they die in the play in the 3v2, and they're again losing minions mid lane at the same time. Then their top lane gets dope. He's down 30 CS as well. Yeah. This game is already out of control and we're only eight minutes in. I mean, this is the potential risk of pick, picking a team fighting comp to begin with. If yeah. you do not protect and have great defense in the early 15 minutes, this is what happens. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Bolulu coming in here, great sidestep from core, and then the bubble just throwing it out there, you know, sees that the ulti is going to be coming down. Oh, no. And it can be getting caught now. Uh, you know, the slows were there on core. It was the right target, absolutely, because he had no flash. So they're going for the right guy, but they just don't actually have enough CC to lock him down and prevent him from throwing out that bubble. Uh, and he doesn't run out of range. You know, he's, he's not just like panicking and trying to run straight away. He just calmly stays there, saves the bubble. As soon as the ulti's popped, uh, drops that raid onto Bolulu, interrupts it. And then in the extended play, they get a kill. Now back to live, they kill Kenby. They're taking the dragon. Uh, this one's looking rough, but we did see Immortals come back from worse <laughs> yesterday. I mean, that's true. Immortals would have to pull off the greatest defense possible. I mean, you're you're pulling. It's we're their talking about. Zone. Yeah, oh, well, they're not even down 10k yet. Who uh, cares? Apparently, they're playing Bloons Tower defense every single game beforehand <laughs> just to get it on deck and ready. But Team Liquid, 
The biggest criticism that we had in the spring split is like, okay, we know the early game is good. How well can you carry this momentum? How well yeah. can you close out the game with this kind of lead? Well, it's really nice to see Piochik having a great game as a uh, big trade from Harry. Ghost is going to be forced and not going to be looking for a kill. We've seen this so many times now with his first strike, Annie. Ulti is ready. You just use it for the trade. You just drop it on your opponent. You're basically farming gold and poking them out of lane at the same time yep. uh, with that rune, which makes it so valuable to just drop it on cooldown. But Piyoshi is having a great early game. Like his pathing has been so intelligent, playing around vision, you know, circumventing where those wards are going to be. Obviously, that is also a team effort, tracking where the wards are dropped. But it's been exactly what you want to see from him on the Lee Sin, taking away another buff from his opponent. And it looks like they could even go for a redive potentially. We'll see if he's going to get up there in time. No, instead, he's just going to take away another Gromp. And someone can move down into the enemy jungle to actually support. So he can be hanging around just in case he's when he comes up. And now he's just going to proxy the wave and kind of put them in this awkward position because they know they should have a winning 2v2. And I think Harry should also be on the roam with them. Call of the Forge God is going to be popped. Can they interrupt it? Nicely done by Pyotr. Oh. Once again, Dragon's Rage interrupts the Call of the Forge God. Doesn't allow him for it to get the recast off. And Kenvi has already exhausted his Glacial Prison. The flash for oh. is the one taking it. Summit popping off with the double. Oh my god. TL are going crazy on the top side. Perfectly done. <laughs> Interrupting Solo again. As now they're trying to actually threaten just a 2v2 dive. Wow, bubble uh, and tidal wave land. It doesn't mean that tactical and uh, treats are going down anytime yeah. soon, but man, it is it is absolute destruction right now. Trade of also, and they got tackles all there. Now the bubble lands. Now it could be a death. Treats is forced to use the breath of life. Gets the healing Ignite's back. Ignite is taking him yeah. down. Yon clips in, and Harry's coming in. Drop the nuke. Drop the big bear on him. You know you want to do it. Boom! Oh, he doesn't even need tippers. Oh my goodness, I got hyped for nothing. But I mean, Team Liquid are having a beach party and Immortals are just left out to dry on the sand. Uh, if you're an Immortals fan, it may be time to avert your eyes because this one is going downhill fast. TL are just playing this out so incredibly well. Yoshik W's in, the safeguard into the kick. Sonic, uh, Sonic Wave coming out and just perfectly layered there onto Solo, interrupting the ulti again. They burst them down and then they know the passive is faded on Sedwani, so he doesn't have that bonus armor and MR. Yeah. Yoshik tanks it up. Summit flashes in to get in range to help finish him off and then an easy walkout. And then this was just really, really nicely done. Trade of ults there. They force out the ult from tactical. Then as soon as that's done, there's no minions to actually block the culling here. So Yon just looks for the angle, found the culling to get another kill. Back to live. Bolulu has flash. We'll see if he can get out. Flash away, but the Tibbers just drop for the extra stun. Oh. Kyoshi with a sonic wave. Safeguards right back on out, baby. Nothing Immortals can do to stop the train that is Team Liquid. Yeah, insult to injury. They're going to get the summoners and the kill as well. It is a trade of flashes at the very least, but... This is like the best game I can remember since he'd come to NA. Yeah. Like he is just going off. He has been everywhere. Uh, he's gotten kills now in, in three lanes. Like he is having a hell of a game we call on that, the Lee Sin. We call that phenomenon jungle surfing. Where you're, <laughs> it, you're just going from every single lane just cruising. Oh, kill here. Burn a flash here. Get another kill here. Let's take good, a tower man. here. Rift Herald crashing into the mid wave after Summit took the turret by himself on the top side on the map. I mean, they, they could go for the 15 play dream. Oh, I mean, absolutely. The rough part is it's not just nine to one, but you start to actually look at the CS, right? Like, look at top lane. We're approaching like 60 CS in top lane. They're almost you know, 10,000 gold ahead at yeah, 13 minutes. It's ridiculous. Almost a thousand Holy gold cow. a minute is a number you pretty much never will see, especially when you consider it. Minions don't even spawn to one third, right? So it's like, it's actually been 11 and a half minutes of, of gameplay here for a nearly 10,000 gold lead. That is absurd and tactical. He's in trouble again. It is not a Gale Force on Yon though. It is the Kraken, so we can't actually Gale Force in and finish him off, oh but Tactical is gonna get sent back to base. They just can't play their lanes. They're yeah. too far behind. You look at the item discrepancies in top and mid and jungle and bot. It's like everything is just completely fallen apart uh, for mortals here. That's 14 plates, Azale. I mean, they're gonna get it, yeah, probably. They're we'll gonna see. Get it. Oh, actually, 13. Uh, there's still one more. Okay, there's one more mid, so they're not gonna get 15 then. Okay. Uh, but they will get 14 out of 15 <laughs> plates. It'll do, uh, as they are now. Okay, 6,500 gold on Yon. It's not even 4K yet for Tactical. Wow. And Jungle's even, you know, just just about the same, right? You know, it is, again, more than a 2,000 gold lead in Jungle. You know, it's about a 2,000 gold lead in top lane. Like, this is just absurd. 
absolute. It's not just a jungle kingdom or a, you know a single. It's an gap. everything it's, gap. It's an everything gap. However, Harry, they're investing a lot of resources into the, into the mid lane. He's still got a flash to work with. He's hugging the wall. He beats them in the tidal wave. It's gonna interrupt Kenvi in the bubble. Keeps them locked down for another kill in the team Liquid's hands. Yeah, and feels like didn't even stop doing the dragon. They finished the dragon at the same time. They rotate over it. They kill him off. They knocked down the last outer tower at 14 and a half minutes. Oh my God, TL came in today angry. I feel like every game that we have seen from Team Liquid this week has just been increasing in level and dominance. The first game against TSM, we saw a little bit of that spring split Team Liquid. We're like, oh God, mid game macros kind of looking a little sus here. You know, everyone's desynced and team fighting, but then the, the game against 100 Thieves, pretty convincing. Summit playing the team fights a lot better. And this game, it's an absolute smash. Yeah, they are just stomping. I mean, the early games have been good in all three games. Um, this one has been the best transition and kind of extension of that lead. We'll see if they can keep making it happen. So we're going to watch Solo die again. I don't think there's any real way out for him. Kick into the wall. Solo's not going to even bother popping the call of the Forge God because he knows that he is gone. Yeah, he is gone. Nothing for him to get done there. They're taking away the enemy jungle. Jax is splitting bot. And Tactical is down three levels in that 1v1. That's like, that's dive range, right? He could easily go in for it, um, but doesn't know exactly where, you know, everyone is on that, t on that IMT side. So Summit not wanting to risk anything. And it is, of course, multiple members from Immortals now roaming down. Uh, and he will get tipped off as his ward gets turned off by that pink. So he will know that people are coming down to the area. Uh, it's going to be another Herald here right on spawn for TL. They know multiple members are down on the bot side. Summit can continue to push. He's going to be to two items here very, very soon. I think probably we're going to see Summit complete his second item before Solo gets his first. I just want to take a step back and just examine the new face of Team Liquid so far. This whole new look that they've come in with. Because not... Oh, okay. Well, I guess you were expecting Harry to be there, but the Glacial Prison goes a little wide. Harry's going to stun him up, flashing away from the Tectonic Disruption. Piotr comes in, looking for the oh. kick. It's just a roundhouse kick to the face for the finisher. Fatality coming in for Piotr. Fiosik just wipes him off the face of the map. Balulu down again, and the Herald's going to drop. They're going to take an inhibitor, He's I going think. in, baby. Oh, Piosik is feeling himself on this game. I mean... Herald doesn't even charge. They're, they're just going straight for the inhib. It's 16 minutes. Why not? This could be the fastest game finish of the split so far, Azale. I mean, th this is looking like one of those games where if, th if they want to flip it, they could try to make Shelly dance. Like, they could try to go <laughs> for it. Uh, I, I think that would be a bit too far, but we'll see how how, how they're feeling about it. Got one more As charge. Summit is actually killing the mid lane tier two at the same time. So they're just going to take the inhib. They're going to take the mid lane tier two. Did it get the charge? I can't tell. I don't, th I don't think oh, so. Oh, no, okay, no, okay, okay. But look at the gold lead. I, I, I want someone from stats to tell me, but I feel like this is like the, the biggest gold lead, like gold per minute type of lead I have ever seen in any game I can remember casting in the LCS. Yeah. Like a 15,000 gold lead at 17 minutes is truly absurd. That is something that you see later on in the game when the game is decisively it's like over. 40 minutes in and it's an absolute <laughs> stop or something. Yeah. But like, we're at 17 minutes. Yeah, the Baron hasn't even spawned yet. I imagine Baron Asher's waiting. It's like, guys, I'm not going to even be part They're of like this game. They're like doubling their team gold. <laughs> What's happening here? It's 23k to almost 40. What happens when you see a flame horizon in every single <laughs> a team, lane? A team horizon? A team horizon. Oh, oh no, no. The oh. Observer's doing can be dirty on that oh, one. Oh, you hate to see it happen as uh, another whiff. I mean, that goes to worst, so let's be honest. It's It's been uh, all TL all the time. Nothing seeming to, to go right for Mortals. As much as we were kind of singing their praises coming into this. Yeah. And they have had, you know, a, a, a great couple of games. Their first game was really, really clean. Yesterday was an amazing comeback. Um, but today, not making it happen here against TL. Summit pushing on the bot side. All Immortals can do at this side at this point. You send four or five to one lane. You hope that TL are playing cocky and you try to get a pick and you try to repeat that like 50 times. And you just keep doing it over and over and over. That's your only option in this game. There's no way you can take a 2v2 or a 3v3. You're probably going to lose even like 3v2s at this point in, in almost all matchups. Yeah. So it has to be like a 4v2 or 4v1, that kind of stuff. But super minions are already pushing in through top lane. Someone's going to have to answer those. As soon as Tactical answers those, Harry's pushing in mid. Uh, TL are five or four bot, rather. So they're just going to push him back. They're going to take this tier two. Uh, you can see Annie's already working on the inhibitor tower mid. So TL are playing this by the book. They very clearly came in and they want to clean this out closely, right? They want to really make sure that they're looking dominant because in game number one, they had an incredible early game. Not this dominant, but an incredible early game. And then they really did just start 
kind of struggling at yep. moments where they're losing team fights, they're making mistakes, they're not being as clean in their execution as they should. So uh, it seems to me like they, they've talked a lot with the team and really focusing on making this as, as uh, clean as they can. Yeah, I mean, when you go back to the end of Spring Split for Team Liquid, for anyone that hasn't gotten a chance to, to watch the, the documentary series that they have, they were heartbroken, uh, barely just missing out on playoffs. Uh, just You could see that Team Liquid were so, so determined to make sure that Spring Split would not come back to haunt them in summer. And if this is the way that they're going to come in every single game, I'm excited for how playoffs is going to look at the end of the season. Yeah, absolutely. We, we know that they're a team of, of really hard workers, as we're going to see one engage here. Uh, won't be able to find anything, but TL have been working hard. Piyoshi going to look for, for a kick, not going to be able to find it. Getting interrupted by the Breath of Life and the Ark of Salt and Kenby, but they have their work cut out for them. So they're making do short work of these inhibitor towers. The bottom one's going to fall. This game is, I mean, it's been looking done and dusted since 10 minutes ago, Azale. But my god, Team Liquid are making sure that there is it's no done questions, done. there is no doubts about this team, that they are coming in with a fresh new look and a fresh new vibe as Pioshik doesn't even go down to the Moonlight Vigil. And they've got teleports on both of their solo laners and going to come back with full HP bars replenished as they look to make the final push. Yeah, Pioshik at about 5% HP. He's still just hanging around just in case. Uh, we'll see if they can actually fully finish it off. Supers are coming in through top lane. Doesn't even look like they want to back off. They just want to close out the game right now. They want to send a message to the rest of the LCS teams in the league. This is the new Team Liquid, and you better fear us because we are coming for the title. We are coming for playoffs. That is crazy to think. This is an eighth place team in spring. They're going to be starting off week number one, three and zero. TL looking amazing out the gate here in summer. Across the board, really playing well. Uh, but Kyoshik stood out so much to me in this one. Yes. He was everywhere, uh, had some really good passing, did a great job. Summit was dominant in the 1v1, but then he got that help to really